How to rebuild a Stuart Models 5A steam engine, part 2. The new parts arrive. Well today started like any other day, I woke up. And then I got out of bed, I did all the usual stuff, and then I washed my hands and I had my breakfast. And then I went into the workshop. I went into the workshop very early because I had to fix my clock. So I fixed that, and then I took a pair of jeans into the workshop and fixed those as well. It's one of those riveted fasteners, and it had broken. So I drilled the metal button and tapped it 4BA to take a 4BA bolt. Then I fitted a nut on the other end of the bolt, and my jeans were fixed. And then someone arrived with a parcel. And my weapon of choice for opening this parcel was a replica gladius sword, a Roman gladius sword as used in the arena. You really have to be careful when using this, as it's a battle-ready gladius sword and it is extremely sharp. And it also has a very sharp point and it's very nasty indeed. So when opening parcels with a replica gladius sword, it's very important to remember to always cut away from you, never towards you. Because accidentally disemboweling oneself will delay the opening of this very important parcel. This parcel contains a reversing gear kit, and a flywheel, and a box bed for the Stuart 5A steam engine. Not very cheap, nearly £400 worth of equipment, but when it's all together I'm sure it will be good. And once again I'm using my replica Gladius sword to get into the box. And please note, there is no blood anywhere on the table. The marks on the table are from wine stains. From my daughter, she has a bit of a drinking problem. She spills most of it on the table. So here are the parts. This piece of cast iron is to make the eccentric sheave. These two pieces will make into the eccentric rods. The next two parts are the bracket that clamps the lever. And here is the drop arm. These two, of course, are the eccentric straps. This is the reversing lever. And this is going to be the expansion link. Quite a lot of work to do on that. The two brackets here hold the whole assembly to the engine. Oh, and I almost forgot. These are the two links that connect the expansion link to the drop arm. They pull the expansion link across so you can actually go from forward into reverse. The casting set comes with a full parts list as well as a full engineering drawing. I can't show the drawing because it's a copyright drawing and I don't want to get into any trouble by breaching copyright. And as far as I understand, the copyright laws in England are very different from the copyright laws in the USA. I will of course be mentioning the dimensions which I take from the drawing when I machine the parts. And it's just like Christmas morning, in a gladiatorial way. I'm opening the flywheel. This is nicely wrapped in bubble wrap. I don't know why, because it's not going to get damaged with a thing of this weight. But anyway, it's wrapped in bubble wrap, and here it is. Quite a good casting. A little bit of fettling is required. Fettling means cleaning up the flashings that are around the casting. I really am having to fight the urge to machine this. I do enjoy machining flywheels. I find it very therapeutic. Maybe therapeutic is the wrong word. Maybe the right word should be terrifying. Because if you make a mess of this, I think this was about £85. So you've lost £85. And in England, that of course is £85 plus value added tax, VAT. This is the bit I'm going to start on anyway. This is the box bed when I finally get into it. And here it is. Yes, and it looks quite nice. There's a flywheel and there's the box bed. It's time to put my Roman sword away until the next servile uprising. And now it's into the workshop. I bought this thing. I don't know why I bought it. I must have been a bit mad. It's not a steam engine. It is an internal combustion engine called an RLE from the Allen Foundry in Wrexham. These, I believe, were initially sold as casting sets and you could build yourself a hit or miss engine out of them. I'm not sure what to do with it really. I may just sell it as it is. Or maybe I'll make it work, I don't know yet. Anyway, this video is supposed to be about rebuilding an old Stuart 5A into working condition. And it's nothing whatsoever to do with an internal combustion engine that just happened to be on the bench at the time I was making the video. And here we are, a man under file. With the box bed clamped securely in the vise, it's time to clean off all the flashings. And this is really hard going. These flashings are actually chilled. If a casting is chilled, it's diamond hard, it's really, really hard. And all that's happening at the moment is the file is just skating off the top of these high points. And it's at this point that I'm thinking, maybe I should just leave this part as it is. It's inside the box bed, no one's ever going to see it, but that is not the point. 
I like to do a good job and do it properly. So it's time for some ultra violence. I'm getting the angle grinder on the job. Now you really have to be careful if you're doing this for many, many reasons, wear eye protection, etc, etc. But this will do a lot of damage and will very, very easily ruin the box bed. So if you find yourself doing this, be very, very careful. But the good news is I didn't ruin the box bed. I just removed the high points of the flashings and now I can file what's left. The hard points which were chilled are now gone and the file's working well. And so now with the help of my trusty file, I'm getting a good finish on the inside edge of the box bed. On the outside of the box bed are two big lumps sticking out, as you can see. Now I can use the file to remove these. It's going to take ages. And being generally quite lazy, I'm going to use the linisher or belt sander for this. Once again, you have to be very, very careful not to remove chunks out of the box bed. I'm only removing these two protrusions. And once I'd cleanly removed the two lumps of metal sticking out from the side of the box bed, I reversed it in the vise and filed the other side. Thankfully, this wasn't chilled and it filed OK. What I have to do now is make it so that one surface of the box bed preferably the bottom of the box bed, is perfectly flat. I'm using the linisher for this and doing both sides simultaneously, just for a bit of variety really. I'm sure the engineering purists are all going tut 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 at the moment. What you should really do is bolt this down to your milling table and run a milling cutter over the top, but at some stage before you do that, you have to get a nice level surface to start with, and the quickest method of doing it is on the linisher. And here I'm using the one inch belt sander to just round the end of the mounting lugs. And this is followed by some more filing. This is high speed filing. I don't normally file at this speed, I just speeded the video up to save some time. Why am I using a casting for this? Why didn't I make the part out of some slabs of mild steel and get my friend to weld them together? Well the point is it wouldn't be a casting. This needs to retain the look of a casting because the full size steam engines generally use castings for the bases. I think that it's the look of the roof casting against the nicely machined surfaces that makes the model look good. One thing's for sure though, the engine's base has to be perfectly level, and at the moment this is not looking too level. There's a bit of rocking going on. So it's back to the belt sander for a bit more removal of metal. As I get closer and closer, what I'm doing is rubbing the box bed on a piece of wetter dry sandpaper, and this tells me where it's not level. Being able to do this on a belt sander takes a bit of practice, and in my case, after many years of practice, I can generally do this okay now. At first, I made a mess of quite a lot of components, and when I check this box bed now on the surface plate with the height gauge, and treat it to one more gentle ride on the belt sander, it is now an accurate component. In this clip, I'm using a small drum sander in my Minicraft drill to finish off the hard to reach parts that a file would make a mess of. And the component still looks like a casting, but it's nice and smooth where it needs to be. When I place the sole plate from the original engine parts on top of the box bed, it's looking good. How do you like this for an idea? You don't have to do it this way. You can mark it out, you can measure, you can mess about. Or you can put a black spot where you think the hole should be. And if it looks like it's in the right position, then drill a hole in that position. It seems very simple to me, but once again, I will reiterate, I am not an engineer. I'm a musician. My brain does not function like an engineer's brain, and I make no apologies for that. I don't know about this, so I just get on with making the steam engines. I'm not being flippant. One of the purposes of me making these videos is to show people who are a little bit worried and a little bit phased by things that, no, you can do it. You can definitely do it, but only if you want to. It's the way that you approach things that matters. It's all down to a question of feel. In this case, what I did was I used a smaller drill. I used a 730 seconds drill first. The finished size needs to be a quarter of an inch. So I thought if I go through with a 730 seconds drill and it's slightly off, can at least use a needle file to correct the hole and then drill it with the quarter inch twist drill and the hole will be exactly in the correct position. But by making a mark with a felt tip pen to roughly the size of the hole and then spotting it with the drill right in the center of the black felt tip pen mark, it follows that when I drill the hole through the felt tip pen mark, it's going to be in the correct position. I feel it only fair to add that this is not a high tolerance component. 
It's a great big lump of metal that the engine sits on. You could use a brick for this, you don't need anything fancy. In fact, thinking about it, why didn't I use a brick? In this clip I'm using a quarter inch twist drill to drill the hole to the finished size. First one side, and then the other. I've turned the box bed round now, and I'm drilling the other side. And you will notice, in the same way as with the first side, the edge of the lug is level with the piece of wood. And this is just a rough guide to show me that I'm in the right place. At some time in the life of this engine, something had been bolted to the sole plate, and it was a bit messy at the front. So what I'm doing is skinning this with some of this JB Weld stuff. Everyone recommended it, and I must admit it really is good stuff. One thing you have to remember though, it takes 24 hours to set, and what it does, it levels, it's self-leveling. So you must make sure that the part on which you put the JB Weld is also level, so that when the JB Weld is cured after 24 hours, that will also be level, and it won't take much sanding to get a good finish. So that's about it for this episode. All I've got to say is thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. The last video misloaded and missed that off, so I hope you found it useful again. Thanks for watching.